God is good. I like us. I like to wish every woman here happy Mother's Day. We are celebrating our women today. If you are standing by, a woman, we wish her happy Mother's Day. The Bible says in Proverbs 31 that charm. The Bible says in Proverbs 31 that charm is deceptive. Beauty is vain because it's not lasting. But a woman who reverently and worshipfully fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Praise God. Great is your mercy towards me. And meditate in his temple. 
this morning, Lord, as we come before you to seek you. Lord, thank you because your word says we will find you. Amen. As we meditate in your temple this morning, Lord, we trust you that our expectations will not be cut short in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray that everyone here will not live the same. Amen. We cast down every imagination contrary to the knowledge of God. We hold every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your comfort, for your counsel, for your guidance, for your help. This morning, Lord, we ask that Lord, no one takes the glory today. We ask that Lord, you take all the glory. Amen. To you, who is able to do super abundantly. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think. By your power which works within us. To you be all the glory in this church and in Christ Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord our God is mighty.
exalted, the King is exalted, and I will praise Him. He is exalted, the King is exalted, and I will praise Him. I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest 
unto a righteousness go forth, brightness, and a salvation as a lamp that burns. The gentle shall see your righteousness, and all, all kings your glory. You shall be called a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You shall also be crowned with glory in the hand of the Lord, and the royal that died in, in the hand of God, in the hand of your Lord. You shall no longer be ten forsaken, nor shall your name any more be ten desolate, but you shall be called Elizabeth, and your land shall be called Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your hand shall be married. For us, for as young men marries the virgin, so shall your son marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace. Day or night, you who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silence. And give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the herd. The Lord has shown, the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the hem of his strength. Surely I will no longer give your grain, your grain as food for your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. And the son of the foreigner shall not drink new wine for which you have labored. But those who have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. Those who have brought it together shall drink it in my holy court. Amen. Go through, go through gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highways, take out the stones, lift up a banner for the peoples. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the hand of the Lord. Say to the daughter of Zion, surely your salvation is coming. Amen. Behold the reward with him and his work before him. Hallelujah. Amen. And they shall call the, them the holy people, the redeemer of the Lord, and you shall be called Soda, the city not forsaken. Amen, hallelujah. Yeah. The women of Jesus' house, please let them have a couple of presentations for us. Let's go get ready for our song. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we move so we don't keep it? Hallelujah.
not see another Mother's Day. Praise the Lord! We're here to see one other song. It says, God is great. And God is great indeed. Listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Christ. 
coming out to the stage to sing. Give us to sit down. And also, the children should come up. And have a song, their mother's day song. Can we have a video, please? Okay. Thank you. Please bear with us. Uh, today is Mother's Day, so it's not going to be church as usual because we're honoring our mothers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we ready with the children? Can we start all over the video with the sound, please? Yes, who predominantly teaches the children's church? The women. So it's not a surprise that the children are coming out to sing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
turn up and bring us a point. So we'll have that video and then we'll have Sister Lynn come um, and uh, give us a Allowing me to blossom 
and encouraging me to flourish. You cared for me from an infant to maturity. I am a mother now with children of my own. The mother you chose to be will be passed on by me. A mother you were then, a great mother you are now. You received your call home, no more suffering and pain. Your earthly home, you should no longer remain. I spent the last hours with you as God prepared your new home. What an honor, what a privilege. I hope you do know that last breath you took. Oh, so peaceful it was. The smile you had, I know God has said, job well done. Forever I will cherish that last goodbye. I will hold it deep down inside to lift up my spirits when I am down, to help, me keep, to help keep me going until the time I receive my crown. So whatever that name you call her, maybe Big Mama if you're from the South, or maybe Mom if you live in the UK, or Mother or Mom here in the good old USA, a mother's love is all the same. It nurtures you and helps you grow. It picks you up each time you fall. It helps you to stand up proud and tall. It helps you to reach the highest heights. It helps you to see the good through all the bad. Cherish your mother. You only get one. One day she will be called home and hear the words, job well done. Thank you. Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, you know, uh, I would have loved to come up after the song, not after that one. Amen. Amen. Because <laughs> it's very emotional. Uh, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to turn to somebody next to you and say, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. We honor you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. We thank God for your lives. We thank God for your care, your love, your sacrifices. And we pray for you. Can we pray for the women, for the mothers? We pray for you this morning that the Lord himself will shower you with his grace. Amen. We pray for you that the strength of the Lord will be your portion. Amen. We pray that Jesus himself will give you joy that passes all understanding. Amen. That he will strengthen you when you need strength. Amen. That he will be there for you even when there is nobody else there. That his grace will sustain you, his hands will uphold you. That he will fulfill your joy in every area of your life. That he will renew you moment by moment, day after day. And that in it all and through it all, you will glorify him. That your life will be a testimony of a life lived for the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will live in health. And I pray that you will walk in victory. And I pray that everything working against your joy, working against your peace, will be defeated before you in the name of the Lord. And I pray that the glory of God will be seen over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, happy Mother's Day to every woman, every mother in the house, every mother and every mother-to-be. Amen. Because if you're not a mother now, you will be a mother as long as you're a woman. Amen. And amen. I praise the Lord for you and I thank God for the grace he has given to you. The grace to be who you are. Amen. 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 I don't envy mothers at all. It's a lot of work what you do. And God gives you uniquely the ability to do what you need to do. And God will continue to sustain you. Amen. Can I hear amen? Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to welcome everybody who's here today. It's a great day to be in church. It's a great day to celebrate. To celebrate the full goodness of God, the love of God, the faithfulness of the Lord. So we bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. And for me, my job is very simple. I have uh, a few minutes to challenge you to, uh, to, to share the word of God with you. I say it's very simple. Know that I take it for granted. I do not. 
But last week we started looking at a subject. We started looking at the subject of overcoming anxiety. Overcoming anxiety. But today being a special day for women, I believe we will, we will still not digress too much from that, but we will focus uh, on something a little bit different. Amen. Amen. My subject this morning is a woman of faith. A woman of faith. But we'll still be within the same general theme of, uh, you know, working through uh, and overcoming anxiety and challenges that faces us in our lives. But our subject is a woman of faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many people are excited to be here today? We are excited. We just in show. Send a message to your face. If you're excited, then let it show. Amen. 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 You know, if you're like me, you find it difficult to smile sometimes. You have to catch me on the web. If you ask me to smile for a picture, I love to start thinking, what can I do to make myself smile? It's a burden. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God created some of us like that. Amen. It's a burden. But I'm excited to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish I had a song to sing for the women. I don't. Amen. But I have a song to sing to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I want you to join me in singing it. I love to sing this hymn. Great is your faithfulness. Oh. Spend time in your word that you will quicken your word to our hearts. 
by your word that you bring healing, by your word that you bring deliverance, by your word that you bring salvation, by your word that you open our eyes to see the fullness of that which you desire for us, that you will strengthen, you will renew, that Jesus Christ alone be glorified. Can I give you alone the glory, the honor, the praise, the majesty, for you alone are worthy, and you alone deserve all the worship and all the praise. In Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can, go with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. As we go into the word, or before we go into the word, I want to say uh, congratulations to all our graduates. We have a lot of recent graduates. You know, congratulations. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. We thank God for keeping you through all those years and all that time of study. And we thank God for his faithfulness. And for those who are still in the process, you will also graduate in good time. Amen. Amen. And for those who are graduating and you're not positioned in looking for jobs and looking for new career path, the Lord will prosper you. Amen. The Lord will open doors unto you. Amen. The Lord will show you unusual favor. Amen. He will open doors that you did not think is possible. Amen. And declare that for you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. What has seemingly been difficult will become easy for Amen. you. Amen. And the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So in that same vein, I want to welcome the, the mother and the sister of our sister here, Jerry, who came to celebrate with her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's, it's a great time to be here because it's Mother's Day. So she, amen. And so, you know, the, she can have the opportunity to see and celebrate with her daughter and your joy will never end in Jesus. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible talks about faith. It talks about what faith is. It talks about the meaning of faith. And also provided us with examples of men and women of faith. People who demonstrated what faith looks like and how to, by the power of faith, obtain the blessings of God for your life. We see this again and again. We call Hebrews a hall of faith. But as you go to chapter 31, you see it talks about, I said verse 31 rather, uh, it talks about a number of people. It mentions this woman called Rahab. If you read from verse 31 through 35, it mentions the woman Rahab and it talks about the fact that she obtained the promises through faith. Then it goes on and talks about a few other people and ends up in verse 35 by mentioning, saying or referring to women who received their dead back to life by faith. Women who received their dead back to life by faith. They mention specific names, but one of these women is our subject this morning. As we look at 2 Kings chapter 4, one of these women, this woman was mentioned, referred to in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 35. You see, 2 Kings chapter 4, I have a very long text to read, so I'll ask you to bear with me. Uh, I'd like to read all of it to put it in context, so that in case I do not say everything I need to say, the word of God will be quick into our hearts. Amen. Amen. So 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem and where, where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know this is a holy man of God who passes, out, who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to her, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid, sir. 
But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, but shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, It is well with, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me, and has not told me. So she said, Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand. She went in, fell at his feet, bowed to the ground, then picked. Then she picked up her son and went out. May the Lord bless his word and prosper in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're talking about a woman of faith. A woman of faith. This is a word I believe doesn't just encourage or is not just relevant to every woman in the house, but every person irrespective of your sex, every person irrespective of your status in life because faith will open doors for you. Faith will take you from where you are to where you need to be. Faith will cause the impossible to be possible for you. And faith is not some way out principle, some difficult concept that is hard to understand. As you will see in this, moment, in, in this text in a moment, faith is something practical and real. Faith is something you and I have a deposit of in us. The faith to live, the faith to receive what God has for us, the deposit of that is already in you. And the faith that is activated is the faith that will bring you results. Amen. Amen. But one of the things you see before we get into that is that this woman had a heart for God. She had a heart for God. And for me, the Bible records, you know, refers to her as a great woman, a notable woman. One of the symbols, one of the emblems of greatness is her heart for God. It is not your stature in life, it is not your wealth, it is not your position, it is not how high you are in your career, but how your heart is with God. When God calls a person great, and when the Spirit of the Lord says a person is notable, and a person is great, the person may be great in terms of resources, but much more, greatness is a thing of the heart. A heart after God is one of the symbols you see in this person. And I pray for everyone here today, I pray that your heart will pant after God. Amen. That you will have a heart that burns for God. Yeah. A heart that desires the righteousness, the fullness of what God or who God is. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, one of the things you see about a heart that is after God is a spirit of generosity. A spirit of generosity. She was a very generous person. Our text says, Elijah will go from Mount Carmel, will come to this area in the land. And she noticed that this man was coming in this area and she became, she offered him food. She offered him food. And the man of God, as some of us will try to do, said, probably said, no, 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 thank you. But the Bible says she insisted, she persuaded him to eat. She persuaded him to eat. You know, there's this, uh, there's this saying in my, in, my, in my language, my culture, where we come from. When somebody, when they say, oh, come and eat, sometimes they'll say, move back a little bit and come and eat. You know, and you don't get it. You, you can't get it except I say it in, in my language and for people who understand my language. But what that means basically is this. Somebody is telling you, come and join me in eating. But they are not really asking you to come. They say, no, this food is not enough for me. I really don't want you to come. So they will just be smiling at you and say, join me, join me when 
deep down in them, they say, <laughs> you know, there are sometimes when you, there are these people that, I don't know if you've known people like that, that they seem to come to your house at particular times of the day. You know, either they're knocking at the door of your house when it's time for breakfast or lunch or dinner. They, they seem to have figured out when there will be food on the table. How many people know what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes, you know, you, it gets to a point when we say, okay, yeah, it's good the first time. It's okay the first time. After a while, you begin to say, oh, that's that person coming now. <laughs> We're not in the house. Let's shut the door. But this is not the kind of person this lady was. She was a woman with a heart after God. And a heart for God is demonstrated in your heart for God's people. A lot of people talk about having a heart for God. I love God, but you don't love God's people. It's impossible for me to love God and have a ground and not be able to love the child of God. It's impossible. Those things don't work together. And if you're here today, you say you love God, but you don't love God's people, go check your love. Amen. Are you with me? She had a heart for God, and she also had a heart for God's people. She had a heart for the man of God, and she said, you know, this man travels back and forth. Please come and eat. You know, it takes a while for a person to feel comfortable coming to your house anytime to eat. A man that has pride, a prophet like Elisha. When I'm talking about a man that had pride, you know the story of Elisha? Are you with me this morning? Yes. Yes. Are you looking at me like that? Yes. I don't have a song to sing, I have a word to preach. Yes. Amen. And I'm not here to entertain you. No. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Elisha was a proud man. He'd be proud in a good sense. You know Elisha was bold? I went, I don't know what was wrong with these uh, kids, but he said, Go, bald man, go, bald man. What did he say? He, he turned back and called. <laughs> was it a beer or a lion? And I don't understand that. So it takes a lot for Elijah to feel comfortable going into this person's house and going every time he's by the city, he goes and he eats. It takes a lot. It must say, and he has the spirit of God. You know, there are some people that, you know, they'll say, oh, come, and they'll smile. But deep down, your spirit is telling you, yeah. That's not. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you feel uncomfortable. But you made our house a place of comfort. May your house be a place of comfort. Yeah. For may your residence, may all that is yours be a place that God will feel comfortable in. Yeah. so important and so powerful. Amen. That's why you see more women in the church than the men. 
They're going to have mercy on our men. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And because our men don't seek after God as they should, that's why our society is the way it is. That's why our world is the way it is. When our men are more bothered with... What, what are they bothered with now? I spend so much time in the church that I don't even... Praise the name of the Lord. They're concerned about appearances. They're concerned about hobbies. They're concerned about, uh, you know, this career. Oh, I, I have to put food on the table. Yeah. If God doesn't give you the strength, how would you be able to put food on the table? Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. A heart after God is revealed in our sensitivity to the word of God, to the things of God. She was sensitive enough to know that this was a man of God. She said, I know this is a man of God. She was sensitive to know he was a holy man. A heart, heart after God is revealed in unconditional service. An unconditional commitment to the Lord. An unconditional commitment to do whatever it takes. Not just to serve or extend the purpose of the kingdom. But to make those who serve the purpose of the kingdom comfortable in doing what they do. That's unusual. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyway, I think her husband was blessed. He was blessed in that he listened to her. Amen. Amen. It's a blessed man who has a woman like that in his life. It's even a, a more blessed man who will listen. Because if he had not listened to her, what blessings they, were, they would have lost. Amen. 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 But it's a man, a sad man, who has a woman in his house that has no heart for God. Or a passion that is contrary to the purpose of God. That instead of drawing the people of God will push away. The man is set up for failure and set up for destruction. May you men not be that kind of man. Amen. 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 So men, let us pray for our women. That there will be women after God. We are heart for God. We are heart completely for God. And pray for yourself, man, that you will listen as God works on the heart of your wife. Because if the heart of the woman is right, the husband will be right. But if the heart of the woman is wrong, the husband is messed up. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. A good example, see politics. The two election circles ago. That will take me away from me. I don't have that much time. My time is running out. Let's leave it alone. Let's go very quickly, very quickly. Amen. Amen. But you know, after spending so much time caring for the man of God, caring for the people of God, the Bible says it came to a time God is not ignorant of the sacrifices, of the care, of the time, of the effort. And I just say to you women tonight, today, every sacrifice, every care, every labor of love will be rewarded. Yeah. Sometimes you sacrifice so much and you wonder, does it matter? Does anybody see? Does it matter? But if nobody sees, God sees. Yeah. If nobody acknowledges or recognizes, God knows, God sees, God sees, and God will reward. One of the things that I see about this woman was she had a heart for God, but her heart was not a heart that sought for a reward. She just loved to do what she did. When the man of God offered her the privilege of getting a reward, she said, I, I dwell among my own people. I'm content with where I am. I just do this because I love my people. I love to be a blessing. I don't need stuff to serve God. I don't need to get A and B to serve God. I will serve God regardless of what I get. I will serve God regardless of position. I will serve, I don't need you to go speak to the governor. I don't need, you know, there's this funny thing that I, the, the chairman of uh, the church in North America talks about, he always talks about it, mentions it about a, a woman who was ordained as a, as a deaconess. And he said, the Sunday after she was ordained as a deaconess, uh, the, she not only was teaching the children, she was again as a, de a deaconess, and then the pastor was on the pulpit, and he saw that she was sitting in front, and he was, he was winking to her and doing this, that she should go to the children's store, and she said, <laughs> No, because, you know, people see it's about position. No, 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 it's not about position. She didn't care. She said, I don't need you to speak for me before the governor. 
I don't need, I don't do this for stuff. I don't do this for recognition. I do it because I have a heart for the people. I have a heart for God. May God give you that kind of a heart. Yeah. A heart that is willing to serve God regardless whether someone recognizes you or not. A heart that is willing to go the extra mile that the name of the Lord may be glorified. Yeah. And for every such heart, there's always a reward. She wasn't seeking a reward. But you know, it even took some time for, for the man of God to know that she had a need in her life. Imagine he had been coming there again and again. He had been eating in the house. He hadn't noticed any child running around. He hadn't noticed anything. But then he still didn't think there was anything amiss. Because she didn't give the impression. Some of us, before anything happens, everybody, everybody in your house, everybody in the church, everybody where you walk will know there's a problem. And if everybody around you is not miserable, you have not started. May God deliver us. Yeah. A person after God has a heart that takes themselves and put themselves on the back end and says that God may be glorified. It is not about me. Will this please God? Will this move forward the purpose of God? It is not about me. Are you with me? Yes. You see, our heart was rewarded. The man of God said, about this time next year, you will carry a child. About this time next year, you will carry a child. Amen. One of the things that I've struggled with, not struggle, I see a negative thing. I made it a prayer point. And I've been praying over that for a while. The Bible did not tell me, and the word of the Lord came to the prophet. The prophet did not say, God says the Lord. The prophet said, about this time next year. He said exactly what Elijah said. There shall be no rain over this land except by my word. He said, about this time next year. May God give us men, women, who know their position in God. Who understand that I can decree a thing and it shall come to pass. May God give you a heart to understand that on your lips, in your mouth, in your heart, is the word of life. As long as you're walking with God, as long as the Spirit of God is in you, speak it and it shall come to pass. Yeah. Tell somebody, speak it and it shall come to pass. Yeah. And it shall come to pass. Say a word of God into your life and it shall come to pass. The man of God said, about this time next year, about this time next year, I hear a word in my spirit. I think the person is somewhere here. I don't know if he's here or here. About this time next year, that credit card debt will be paid off. I don't know who it is, but that's what I heard. About this time next year, that debt will be paid off. But there's a challenge on you to be disciplined. Amen. There's always a challenge. It doesn't come free. Because when it's paid off and you go and carry it again, you're in trouble. God leaves you by yourself. Amen. 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 May the Lord never leave you. Amen. 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 About this time next year, you will carry the child. Amen. What is that thing you've been waiting for? I prophesy to your life, about this time next year, it shall become a testimony. Amen. What is that dream you've been expecting? About this time next year, you will be married. Amen. What is that desire, that dream? You've been saying, when will my time come? When will my season come? I prophesy to you today by the authority of the name of Jesus that before this time next year, you will return to testify the Lord has done it for me and I rejoice in the greatness of my God. I decline and so shall it be in the name of Jesus. But something very quickly, something very quickly. You know what the man of God said about this time next year? The woman said, no, my Lord. No, my Lord, don't lie to your servant. Something here does not align. We're talking about a woman of faith. And I'm going to get there if I have time. We're talking about a woman of faith. But you see, the prophet said, something will happen to you this time next year. She said, no, 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 no. Don't go there. Sometimes the word of God has this ability to unsettle us, to upturn 
of turn our concepts and you know challenge us and draw us out of our comfort zone. It was all right and everything was okay. She was serving. She was doing all she could until it touched the soft spot of her life. It touched by the prophecy, the vulnerability of her life. It touched an area where, you know, this is not something somebody says ordinarily. This is the response of a person who has faced disappointment. This is the response of a person who has seen so much happening. She had hoped, she had believed, she had dreamt, and the dreams have not come to pass. And she had come to a point of accepting that this was her love in life. She had come to a point of saying, I'm cool with it, whether God does it or not. It wasn't a problem anymore. It wasn't a challenge. Because she had hoped, she had believed, and every time she did, in the past there was disappointment. She said, no, my Lord, don't talk to me about this. This is a sensitive area. Just leave it alone. You don't need to give me promises. I will serve God anyway. You don't need to tell me anything. I'm going to serve God regardless. I don't want to be disappointed again. You know what she was doing? She was guarding her heart. I don't want my heart to be broken again. I have hoped before. I have dreamt before. I have loved before. But it's been broken. I have expected a miracle before. But my expectations have been cut short. I have dreamt that the impossible was possible for me before. But then I had fallen short. I don't want to be hurt again. Just leave it alone. We're, we're okay. Don't touch this. Don't go to this area. Just leave it alone. Let me move on. Let me just continue as I am. But God is not going to leave what he wants to turn around. Amen. God is not going to leave alone an area that he needs to affect. Those areas of vulnerabilities in our lives are areas that God is calling you and I to say, trust me. I hear the Lord saying, trust me, trust me, trust me. You see, I've tried before, trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me. You have wept before, you have hoped before, you have drunk before, but he says, trust me. Just open your heart. Because if you will open your heart, God is able to perform what he promises. The Bible says so in Romans chapter 4 verse 21. He's able to perform what he says. He's able to do it. Just open your heart. And I pray today that God will give you the grace to open that heart. Amen. Oh, I've opened my heart. I believe that this child will be better before. And it became worse. Open your heart. Believe one more time. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. I've tried to walk this path. I believe that I will get that breakthrough before, but open your heart. Trust me. Trust me. If you forget everything else that I said this morning, don't forget that. God is saying to you, trust me. Trust me. I can do it. I desire to do it. God wants to take you to where he promised you. Trust me. Trust me. He's able to perform what he says. The Bible says, but the woman conceived. God is able to do what he says. God is not limited by time or space. He has, I said, she has no son. He didn't say she has no child. He was even specific about the sex of the child that she needs to have. She has nobody. And her husband is old. So God had to do a miracle on the husband first before the miracle of conception can take place. Because the man was old already. Every miracle you need, I command and decree into your life today in the name of Jesus. What needs to be renewed, restored, recreated, shall be recreated in the name of Jesus. 
What needs to be supplied? The heavens will supply for your life in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the name of the Lord, I declare that for you today. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. When she conceived, what do you think would have happened to her faith? Blossom. Faith blossoms when the word of God is seen. And when the word of God becomes a reality, every promise of God will become a reality for your life. I thought I'll have a believing amen. amen. You guys don't seem to believe what I say sometimes. <laughs> amen. amen. The Bible says, believe the prophet and you shall prosper. You're looking at me, are you a prophet? I go to several places and before I get there, some of my friends just call me nothing but prophet. They don't call me pastor. Because as I declare it, it comes to pass. Amen. And I declare it over your life, the word of the Lord, it shall come to pass. Amen. Before this time next year, the struggle, the pain, the change will be a thing of the past in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm really out of time and I'm just introducing my message. I'm serious. Because I'm talking about the woman of faith. Faith blows up. Faith must be built up. Because like you see in that text, a day will come when you'll be put to test. When God gives you a blessing, it is to prepare you for the blessings ahead. The blessings ahead are greater than the blessings of today. But the faith that is built today because of the blessings of today prepares you for the victories of tomorrow. You've been tested today. Thank God for that because it's just the lower rung. And you're going higher. Yeah. Tell somebody you're going higher. Yeah. You're going higher. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I have five more minutes? Yes. Okay, you're going higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are going higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace to soar, the grace to rise up are released by the authority of the name of Jesus over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. You are going higher in the name of Jesus. You are going higher in the name of Jesus. You are going higher in the name of Jesus. You are going higher in the name of Jesus. Weep it as endured, but your morning has come. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. You're going higher in the name of Jesus. The pains of yesterday will never be part of your body anymore. Will never be part of your testimony anymore. But it comes loaded with tests. But you shall pass the test. You shall pass the test. Because your God will take you over. What of God says greater is he that is in you than he that is in every test. Tell somebody I will overcome. Because I'm an overcomer. Say it like you believe it, I will overcome. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Trouble came. Trouble came. The Bible says the day came the child was in the field with the father. And the child said, my head, my head, my head hurts. Oh God, have mercy on fathers. And the father said, take him to his mom. Doesn't that sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Men have always been the same. May God change the hearts of men. Amen. When it becomes difficult, when it becomes a burden, you say, take him to the mother. When it becomes something of accolade, you say, ah, that's my child. That's my child. When it's a challenge, go to your mother. 
When the child is not doing so well, you, you, you look like, act like your mom. You're a child of the mother. And you know what? The mothers don't mind. They will say, whether the child is doing bad, it's mine. Whether the child is doing wrong, it's mine. This is my child. This is my child. You see what happened? The father said, take him to the mother. And when the child got to the mother, what did she do? Carried him and put him on her knees. Put him on her knees. The child was what? Was crying, was in pain. But what was she doing? She was comforting him. She was nurturing him. And I believe she was praying for him. Oh, my child, you will leave. It is okay. The pain will go away. The pain will go away. You will be all right. But then the child died in our hands. Right on our knees. This is the challenging time. This is when hopes are dashed. This is when dreams are shattered. This is when faith wavers. When the child you've been praying for and you've been nurturing. When the dream you've been praying about, the dream you've been nurturing dies while you're holding it. Oh God, when I was crying to you and the child died. This is a child of miracle. This thing is a testimony of the faithfulness of God, but it died. It died. But what did she do? The normal person, the regular person, faith will have disappeared, but she took the child. This is what God was preparing her for. She took the child and she placed the child on the bed of the man of God. Imagine if the man of God was not in that house. That miracle would not have happened anyway. And if there was no room, even if he came and ate, there would have been no bed to put. You know, this bed, I don't know how long the journey took, but Elisha was the same one who was dead and been buried and his bones were what was left. And they threw a dead man into his grave and the dead man touched his bones and came alive. You think the recipe of the anointing of God was not on the bed? Sometimes we think miracles are spontaneous. Of, no, not all miracles are pump, spontaneous. Some miracles are progressive. Are you with me? Yes. Here was a child on the bed. And she ran. The man, the husband said, what's happening? Why are you going to the man of God? She said, it is well. Now a few lessons and I'll be done. I'll be done. I said five minutes. I need one more minute. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, these are the lessons we learned about a person of faith. Number one, she refused to panic. She refused to panic. panic. You know, the situation denied that you don't have any ordinary person without that preparation, without that focus, that concentration on the word of God, without aligning with the word of God, without availing yourself of the blessings of being around the man of God, around the word of God, around the company of God's people. When a challenge comes, you will panic. You will panic. Because you know you are beyond your ability. Because you know everything you know cannot help you. It's got to take something more, and you don't know how to get it, you don't know where to get it, so you panic. Faith refuses to panic in the face of the test. So a person of faith, in faith refuses to panic. panic. Tell somebody, don't panic. Don't panic. Because your God is still on the throne. Because your God is still on the throne. When you tell me not to do something, give me why. Don't panic. panic. Amen. Amen. Second lesson you learn of a person of faith is she knew where to turn to. She knew where to go. She laid, she took the child to the room, laid the child on the bed, and he refused to panic. The husband said it's not church day, it's not uh, Christmas, it's not uh, Mother's Day, it's not Easter. Why are you going to see the man of God? It is well. She knew where to go. She knew that whoever seeks the Lord will find him. She knew that whoever turns to the Lord will find support from the Lord. 
She knew that God never begins a project and abandons it halfway. God never starts a work that is not willing to fulfill. If he begins a work, he will do it. Amen. The Bible says that he who started a great work in you is able to complete it until that day. He will not stop until God fulfills his purpose. Your destiny will be fulfilled. As long as this God that I serve is the same God you trust your life into, it shall come to pass. Do I have a believer in the house? Amen. Amen. Okay. She knew where to turn to. Very quickly, she was not talkative. She was not a talkative. Oh, 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 oh sister, sister T, pray for me. No, 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 no. Gehazi came. Gehazi was a man of God at that time. You know, she had a focus. <laughs> I don't want all the Gehazis of those world to talk to me. I'm going to the source. If God used you to bless me, God must use you to deliver me. Amen. If God spoke through you yesterday, as long as you're still working with him, I know he will speak something. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. She refused to panic. She knew where to turn to. She was not talkative, telling everybody on the road what is going on. Because when you begin to tell everybody, oh, they may care for you. They may be concerned about you. But the more you talk to them, the less your faith becomes. Because they'll tell you, oh, 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 what a pity. Oh, sorry, sister. Oh, oh. Like we say where I come from. Do. Well, eh? That's not what you need. Speak the word. Keep your eyes on the goal. It will be well. What is happening to you? It is well. I'm not saying don't pray with a sister. I'm saying don't be talkative. Before you pray with a person, let that person, make sure the person is a person of faith. Oh, not somebody will run helter-skelter with you. Church, the church is filled with people who will panic with you. I don't need a panicky friend. I need somebody who will stand on the word of God and show me how to be resolute in my faith. And show me what it means to believe the word of God until God does what he promised to do. I need a friend who will tell me, stand up straight. Stand up straight. I was whining to a colleague this week, a colleague. And he began to say to me things that I said to them and said to everybody. He said, that's not you. And I told him, Preacher preaching and he started laughing. <laughs> because you don't need people who say, oh, I'm crying. you know, sisters, you know what we do when she comes? The person, you, sometimes you see two people crying, you don't know who is the one with the problem. But the person who came to tell you, they're all crying together. And you feel good at the end of it. Praise the name of God. That's something about women that I don't understand. I don't need that. She was passionate in prayer. She came to God. She challenged God by his word. I didn't ask for this. If you bless me with this, then you can turn it around. I am not going to leave you until there is a turnaround. I'm not going to let go until there is a turnaround. May you be that kind of person who will say, Lord, I will hold on to you until there is a turnaround. My time is over and over and over a lot. I want you to lift up your voice, our hands with me, and say, Father, make me a woman, a man of praise. Make me a man of faith. Help me to be a person who will not panic. Run helter scatter. Help me to stand upon your word. Help me to hold on to your word. Help me to run until I get to the goal that you have set before me. I know there will be tests. I know there will be challenges, but Lord, help me to keep my eyes on the goal. Help me to keep dreaming, to keep believing, to keep seeing what you have said. And help me to speak it. And when peace doesn't seem to be right, help me to declare. Because what I say by your name shall come to pass. And Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. Father, we magnify you. I pray for every person here. At the sound of my voice, let abundant grace be released. Amen. Amen. The grace to walk with you. Hold somebody's hands, please. Whoever is next to you, 
hold their hands very quickly up. Man of time, job. just pray for them. Just pray for grace. Pray for grace, 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 grace. If you are holding a woman, it's very important. You pray for that woman to be a woman of faith. Because we need them. We need women of faith. We need women who will stand on the word of God. We need women because God needs them and uses them as a channel of blessing to the human race. Just pray for that person and prophesy and pray for them that grace will be released, strength will be released in the name of Jesus. Strength, strength, strength. Speak that strength, speak that grace to them in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. All over the house, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the abundant strength that you release. And I speak into the lives of your people that this grace be released, this strength be released, that your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. I command every chain to be broken. Amen. I command every spirit of delay Amen. to be banished from your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I release your destiny to fruition. I release your destiny to manifestation. Yeah. Every promise of God will come to pass in your life yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Father, we bless you. Yeah. Father, we magnify your name. Yeah. For you are God who is able to do much more than we can ask or think. And I ask that you be glorified. Yeah. I ask, oh God, that you be exalted. Yeah. If you're here in the house this morning, you have not surrendered your heart to the Lord, this is the time to do so. Or if at one point in time you have surrendered your heart to the Lord, but you're not really living for God as you should, and you need to make a rededication of your heart and your life to God, tell him, God, I come to you. Lord, I surrender my heart to you. Make sure you do so this morning. This is the best time to do that. Say, Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my home. I've tried to do these things by myself. I can't do them. I need you. And I ask you that you be my Lord. I ask you that you be my God, that you guide me, that you teach me the way that I go. And I surrender my heart to you. Father, I bless you this morning. We magnify your name. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Let me hear you believe in amen. 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 Somebody help me praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. As we sit down, let's get ready to give our offerings and our tithes. Amen. Amen. Um, a couple of announcements before we do that. Uh, this coming weekend is a special event for us in here. And actually, all of us, uh, all over the our zone, will have churches from all over Ohio who belong into us in our zone. There are two zones. We have two zones in the church in Ohio, but our own zone has eight churches. And they will all be coming here this weekend. They will be coming here Friday evening and Saturday morning. We have a conference. And I'm inviting and asking everybody to come. It's not really a regular conference. It's a time of empowerment. And we have with us this weekend from Friday night, our provincial pastor, who's also the head of the prayer ministry for the church in North America. He's an anointed man. And he's an anointed man of prayer. He'll be with us on Friday. And he'll be ministering here on Friday, Friday night. So be here 7 p.m. on Friday. We'll have a lot of praise, a lot of worship, a lot of celebration, but we'll have men of God, women of God, sharing the word of God with us. There will be deliverance, there will be healings, there will be miracles. I'm expecting something great this coming weekend. And I expect and I ask you to be part of it. Amen? amen. Only two people said amen. amen. If you don't say it better, amen, I'm going to have a workers' meeting after this. And I'm pushing that. I'm serious. Because I want to make sure every person, every worker, comes here on Friday night and Saturday morning. If you're a worker in this church, come here Friday night and Saturday morning. Except for some special reasons. And those special reasons, let me know. And you and I will determine if they are special or not. Otherwise, if you're a worker in this church, be here Friday night and Saturday morning. Can I hear amen? Amen. And everybody else also be here. You'll be blessed because God will do an awesome thing. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to give your tithes and offering? Amen. Lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I bless you. I give you this gift that you're giving me. It's a token of my appreciation. I thank you for everything you have done. And let this offering, let this seeds, let this tithe be acceptable unto you. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Tithe is a tenth of your income. If you earn an income, give a tithe. Give in honor of the Lord. Amen. And also give a special offering in honor of the women of the mothers. Your mothers. And thank God for your mothers. Amen. Amen.
for Sunday, May 11th, 2014. Our announcements, Team C should remember to meet at your scheduled time for church cleaning this Saturday. The Ohio Zone 2 Minister and Leadership Conference will take place this Friday and Saturday. The time for Friday's conference is 7 p.m. and Saturday's conference will start at 9 a.m. There will be a special women's conference taking place on Saturday also. So women, please take note and come and be part of that special um, conference for women. Please make sure to mark your calendars and not to miss this conference. A reminder that the RCCG North America Annual Convention is also taking place in Texas on June 18th through the 20th. It's at the Redemption Camp in Greenville, Texas. Those attending this convention should register online at RCCGNA website. And the registration is free and it will remain free for the duration of registration time. What's happening this week at Jesus House Cleveland? Wednesday, May 16th is the Intercessors Prayer Meeting at 6 p.m. Friday, the 16th at 7 p.m. is the Zonal Conference and it will continue on Saturday at 9 a.m. Sunday, May 18th, is our prayer meeting. It starts at 9.30 a.m. here on Sunday. Our upcoming events, June 1st, is the Jesus House Cleveland International Day, and it's also the RCCGNA Evangelism Day. June 15th is Father's Day. 
again June 18th through 20th is the convention and June 19th here at Jesus House Cleveland we'll be, we will be celebrating all our graduates in the house all the graduates from the School of Disciples all high school and college graduates so please make sure that you're here with us to celebrate on June 29th all the graduates in the house thank you and have a wonderful week Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We've had a lovely time today, a wonderful time in God's presence. The Bible says, honor your parents, honor your father and mother so that it might be well with you and so that you live a long life on earth. Let us honor our mothers today, today being Mother's Day. I honor my mother today. She's not here to hear this, but I do honor her today. Um, I forgot the name of that basketballer that had the MVP. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Yeah, Kevin Durant. I don't know who watched his um, 30 minute speech. It was quite moving. And the last part when he was honoring his mother, I was there just bawling with them too. As though it was my mother, I could relate. Um, Pastor Dennis wants me to tell you all that there is a lot of food provided by the men's ministry after the service. Something to honor mothers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As we close the service today, let us thank God for the word we've heard. The word of God is a strength unto us. The word of God is God himself. Let us commit our coming week into God's hands. And let us pray that God will continue to guide and guide us. And before I forget, we need the welcome person. Let's um, First timers, first timers in the house, people here celebrating with us for the first time. You're welcome to the first house to It's nice to have you now. I hope you had a wonderful day today. I hope you got a gift being a mother. Thank you. are also invited to the other side for the munching and for the dining and wine. Amen. 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 Let us share the grace together in fellowship. Lord, well, we thank you for the day we've had, for the wonderful time in your presence, for the word we've heard. Word straight from you, from your presence, from your altar, from your throne. And Lord, as we go this week, we commit our week in your hands, knowing that you are the author and finisher of our faith, and you are the one that keeps us. You keep our coming and you keep our going out. Lord, we continue to commit ourselves in your hands. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit that guides us, the spirit that is our advocate, the spirit that is our counselor. And we continue to hold on to him, hold on to your word, letting him lead us, letting him teach us what to do in all times and in all things. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. Even as we mothers celebrate today, we thank you for the strength you've given us. We thank you for the strength you've given to our brothers, to our loins, that we can be all what you want us to be, a supporter in the house, the pillar of faith. But we thank you all for all mothers, for what they do, even if they're not appreciated and even if they are appreciated. You alone knows the strength you invite in mothers to be what you want them to be. The women after your own are, the woman who seek you daily. I thank you for the woman that brings her house together, that supports her house and not tears her house down. And I thank you for all the women in Jesus House Cleveland today. You've made them a blessed woman. You've made them all blessed. That their, that their, that their husbands and that their children will call them blessed today, that they'll be honored in your presence, Lord, forever and ever. That, Lord, you continue to give them all that they need to be what you want them to be. Amen. To be a mother, to be a lover, to be a daughter, Amen. to be a wife, Amen. to be a doctor, to be a career woman. Whatever you have made them, whatever you have placed in their hands. Amen. Lord, we thank you for every woman today. The grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Bless and abide with us now forevermore. Amen.
Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Amen. Happy Mother's Day.